Hello and welcome to this video on doing a dependent t-test on SPSS. This is version 21, but earlier versions should be very similar. And what we're going to do is take a look at how to set up your data set, how to do the analysis and interpret it, and then how to do a bar graph. And we're also going to test for one of the assumptions of the dependent t-test, which is normality. So before we get into that, let's just take a quick look at how the data set is set up. You can see that in most cases for a dependent t, which by the way is also called a paired samples t-test or a repeated measures t-test, those three things are all the same. You can see that we have a pretest score and a post-test score. Most often you have two conditions and all of your cases, all of your participants are in both conditions. Um, and so we have scores on a pretest of a knowledge test and then we have scores on a post test and we want to know whether or not there's a significant difference between the pretest and the post test. Unlike between subjects designs where you have one column is the independent variable and one column is the dependent variable. In this case we have one column for each of our conditions. So there's no column that tells what condition you're in. No independent variable column. Instead we've got dependent variables on the pretest here and on the post test here. Um, if we switch over to variable view uh, you can see that we've set this up. It's important since your dependent variable is on at least an interval scale that you should make sure that those are set to scale. That could have implications later if you don't have it set properly. So we've got these data and one of the things that we want to check with a dependent t-test is whether or not we have met the assumption for normality and we can take a look at this by doing a kolmogorov smirnov test, but before we do we need to collapse the pretest and post-test data into a different score. And this is actually what's happening behind the scenes when SPSS runs the dependent t-test. But we're going to actually physically create that variable and then we can use that to test the normality assumption. So to do that we go to transform compute variable and create a new variable called difference, something like that. And then we'll take our post-test score and subtract from it our pretest score. Hit OK, and we're going to get our output window here, which just tells us that SPSS has done that for us. And now you can see this third variable is here. We can resize it if we want. And you can verify that the math is correct, that the first person had no change, the second person went up by 0.2, and so on. Okay, so now we're ready to check for the normality assumption. And we can do that by going to Analyze, Descriptive Statistics, Explore. And we're going to use our difference variable that we just created and move it into the dependent list box. And we're going to click on plots. Now we're not actually looking for graphs, but this is actually where the Kolmogorov Smirnov test is hidden. So click there and check normality plots with tests. Note that you're not actually going to see anywhere on here the listing for Kolmogorov Smirnov, but it's going to come out with this option. We don't really need the stem and leaf, so if you want, you can get rid of that. Hit continue and then OK. And we can just scroll down until we get to the test of normality, which is right here. And the significance column is 0.2. Uh, remember that if we are testing an assumption, we want non-significance. So we're looking for a value that is 0.05 or higher. And that's the case here. You may see this little asterisk. Sometimes with small sample sizes, you're going to get this note. This is a lower bound of the true significance. It means that our significance value might actually be higher than 0.2, but it's not lower. And that's what's important. So since it's above 0.05, we're fine. If it were below 0.05, uh, then we'd have a problem. So we've met the assumption of normality, and we can go ahead and proceed with the, with the rest of the test. So I'm going to minimize this. So we're not really going to use this different score um, for the actual analysis. We're going to focus on these two conditions here. And we go back to Analyze, and now we're going to compare means. All the t-test analyses are in this menu. Um, our choice is paired samples t-test. Like I said, it can also be called repeated measures t or dependent t. Okay, 
and we're just going to select the two conditions. You can use your shift key to select more than one thing. The two conditions in our study and drag them over. You can also use the arrow here. And which goes in which is not really um, important. It may change the sign of the result, plus or minus, but it's not going to change the actual t value or whether it's significant or not. There aren't really any options that you're likely to want to choose. So go ahead and just click OK. We're going to skip through all that normality stuff and head down to the results of the t-test. And so in the first box, you're going to just see the means for your two conditions. And you can see that our uh, two conditions were different by, you know, a little bit more than 0.2. Um, but whether or not that's significant or not depends upon our standard error. Um, and you can see here, you don't really need to look at this, but you can see that the correlation between the pretest and post-test is significant. It's pretty strong. It means that people who did well in the pretest also did well in the post-test. What we're really after is the paired samples test. So here's the difference between the two conditions on average, the standard deviation, and then the standard error, um, which is an index of our precision or lack thereof. Now we have to move over here, and here's what we're really after. Our t is negative 2.384, but the negative sign isn't really important. And with seven degrees of freedom, our p-value is 0 0.049. Now with an alpha level of 0 0.05, which is conventional, um, this would be just a bit lower than that, which means that our results are less than 5% likely to be uh, due to chance if the null were true. So this is a significant result. It's close, but it does exceed the critical value, and our p-value is lower than our alpha level, so we do say that this is significant. So that these the pretest post-test scores are significantly different from one another, and if we go back to the means, we can see that the post-test score is higher than the pretest, which is what we would expect if we had an intervention in the middle where we were increasing people's knowledge, hopefully. So that's the t-test itself. 